Hi, welcome back. So today we will um, learn. So previously we learned a lot about, I mean, a little bit about DC analysis of BJT uh, and different mode of operation. So today is more about application. We will trying to uh, figure out what can we do with our BJT. So let's go into it. So you can do a lot of different things with BJT. Uh, and BJT have several application, which is pretty useful. Uh, the first application that you can do with BJT um, is related to the two characteristics of the BJT. Um, if you buy, if you you remember, basically um, the BJT have different mode operation. You can have cut off and you can have uh, forward active. You can have um, saturation. But if you only care about cut off and saturation, you can act you can actually effectively create a switch on the BJT. So this circuit is called an inverter circuit. It can act as a switch. Okay. So if you have VI, which is the input voltage, okay, and VO, which is the output voltage, if VI is if you have VI is less than VER, then the whole thing is in cut off, right? So now you know that if, uh, this circuit is in cutoff, uh, there's no current like IB and IC are both equal to zero, there's no current flow in through here, then basically you, uh, you open circuit, this switch, and you open the switch. But when you set uh, VI equal VCC, you allow it to be in saturation, uh, the VCE equal uh, VCE saturate saturation so then now you allow the um, saturated IC current and the IB to flow through so effectively you let the current from here flow to here uh, you close the switch so similar to the previous circuit uh, this is also called an inverter circuit but uh, the application is exactly the same structure but the application is a little bit different uh, if you remember your digital design course, um, you can use the circuit for digital logic. So um, remember the inverter in digital logic, you give a logic high in the input, then you can get a logic low in the output, or vice versa. So if I give, a, a, if I assign VI equals zero, and give it a logic low, um, then this BJT is in cutoff, right? Uh, if it's in cutoff, there's no current flowing through, uh, flowing through RC. So if there's no current flowing through RC, um, the voltage here will be equal to voltage here. So then you have your VO equal 5 volt, and it's gonna be a logic high. So you invert it from here to here. What if you give it to be a VCC? Okay, you put VCC in. You put BCC in, um, then now VO will, will be equal to VCE saturated. Uh, the, normally VCE, VCE saturated is between 0 0.1 and 0 0.3 volt, so it's pretty low. So you can create a logic low based on uh, that behavior. So the third application and the application that we want to highlight is amplifier. So for example, if you look at this BJT circuit in here, and this is exactly the inverter circuit. Um, so you have uh, a source voltage, a base, uh, a base voltage. Some people call it bias voltage. Um, so if you if you have a small time varying signal, okay, you have a small time varying signal in here, uh, and you can bias with a certain amount of voltage. Uh, you can actually utilize the slope of the linear region in your uh, of your BJT to um, to amplify the output signal. Okay, so for example, if you are in biomedical industry, uh, you're measuring brain signal from some uh, from some animal. Uh, it's usually around a few or like let's say less than 100 millivolts, so you want to 
amplify the signal up a lot to be able to read it. So um, first of all, let's try to, to uh, in order to understand this, let's try to analyze the circuit. So let's let's have all the number plug in uh, in that circuit that I gave out there. So let's assume uh, if we have a BJT, it's gonna have a beta. Let's assume beta to be 120. Uh, VB on, of course, 0.7. Uh, let's assume uh, VC is set to be 0 0.2. What I want you to do is I want you to find, find what is the amplification factor. That means, okay, if I amplify the signal, and what is the amplification factor of this signal over here? That means the, the varying signal here, VO. Uh, how can you compare it to BI? Okay. Um, so, first of all, let's consider um, DC condition first. So, um, I will assume that there's no um, the, the, the varying signal. That means the small BI varying signal will, uh, will become zero. Or, um, and I can assign this one to be equal to BBB. Okay. So there's no variation in signal right now. Everything is DC. I will first, I will first um, analyze this loop right here to figure out what is my IB. So I have the equation here. So I have IB equal to VI, this voltage, minus for VB on, which is this the voltage is this point, over RB, which is this one, okay? So I plug in off my number. Now I also know that um, IB equal uh, uh, IC over beta, okay? Or another, in another word, is the linear relationship between IC and IB. So IC equal beta uh, multiplied by IB. Uh, so I plug that, I plug that in here, okay? So now I can actually do some math and calculate my IC based on my VI, my input voltage, okay? Next, I'm gonna um, try to figure out, um, analyze this loop right here. So I want to understand what is the voltage at, at, at V out at the output voltage. So basically, if you wanna have the output voltage here, it's actually this source voltage uh, minus the voltage drop across this resistance resistor right here. So I can have five minus IC, which is the current across this resistor, multiplied by RC, which is the resistant Ohm's law, okay? So then uh, I can have, I can basically do some manipulation to get an equation depending on IC, okay? So now I have the first one equation for IC here. I have the second equation for IC over here. Um, what I can do is I can combine them together now you can see I have output voltage on one side and input voltage on the other side. So effectively, I can derive a relationship between uh, the output voltage and the input voltage in DC conditions. So if, if I know that my input voltage, I mean, if I know that my output voltage will vary between 0 0.2 and 5, Okay, and why? Um, so 0 0.2 is the lowest possible of the output voltage because uh, it is the VC set, VC saturation, okay? And five is from the source here, okay? So basically it's because of VC set uh, and the, the, the source voltage, VCC, okay? Just to limit. If I plug in this math, I can actually figure out that VI will vary from uh, 0 0.7, okay, which is the, uh, actually this 0 0.7 is for linear region, okay, I will say it again. Uh, that means during, when you just cross the cutoff threshold, when you, and you add, uh, when you add the cutoff, sorry, when you add the cutoff, uh, VI will be equal to 0 0.7 volt and VO will be equal to 5 volt. But when you are at the other end, 
when you at the saturation level, um, like the, the saturation point, VO will be equal to 0 0.2 volt, and you can have VI equal to 1.9 volt. So now, um, okay, so you know that um, our VI actually equal to VBB equal to 1.3 volt. Um, so now I have, this is the, the behavior of my BGT circuit here, okay? So as I say, if VI varying from 0 0.7 to 1.9, I will have VO varying from 0 0.2 to 5 volt, okay? Uh, and it's a negative slope. So now what I want to do is I want to trace, okay? I have my VI equal VBB equal 1.3 volt, so I put a dot in here, I trace it up, then I figure out that, okay, my, um, my VO, my e, my D, my VO in DC condition will be equal to 2.6 volt. Okay, uh, some of you may do some fancy math to basically write down your linear equation here, but other way, uh, you can have your DC VO to be 2.6 volt. volt. Sorry. So now you finish, you finish DC analysis. Now you can do the AC version of it. So you put in the uh, small variant, vari like varying input voltage here. So remember that linear region equation that we have right here. Okay. Uh, when you vary a little bit of VI, then you vary a little bit of VO. Okay. Effectively, you can ignore this uh, the y intersect of this equation. Then you can write the equation in this way. Consider you only care about the variation of uh, VO and VI. Okay, so now we're going to the end. If you want to calculate the uh, uh, amplification factor, basically you have delta VO divided by delta VI will be equal to minus 4. And minus 4 is our amplification factor. So in this example, basically we have a circuit, we analyze everything, we analyze everything, then um, we have a circuit, we analyze everything, then we have the amplification factor. Uh, in practice, more often you will ask to design a circuit that uh, have a specification, for example, uh, you have to do a uh, minus 10 amplification factor, then what you want to do is you want to decide what to put in in your RB, your RC, um, and also very important factor is your bias, and I will explain why it's important. So, uh, so this nice amplification is achieved because we actually put our bias right here, right? We put our bias exactly at 1.3 volt, so everything will be nicely done. Uh, like if as long as your your voltage doesn't cross this area nothing nothing is gonna go wrong okay uh, but what if what if you don't have like so usually um, when you want to bias it uh, you want to bias it, bias it at the Q point like just right in the middle but now is here's the question what if you um, you do a bad job in biasing what if you put like 1.9 volt for biasing, which is basically the higher end of VB that you should of VI. So if you put the Q point right here, and you bias it right here, you can see now your signal have a cutoff, right? Um, so therefore, like basically instead of uh, like basically effectively amplifying the signal, you will lose like a large chunk of your uh, uh, pick to pick magnitude. So always consider biasing when you design your circuit. So next lecture we will go through biasing. Um, and that's it for today. So uh, this is the end of our lecture. Uh, I'll see you guys next time.